My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Into the matters of insight and revelation. We have told God that you punish us with your sufficiency. That by the strength of your spirit, we may advance out of this place as conquerors, as winners, and as victors. So that the new season that you are opening over our lives, we will enter into it as overcomers. Take all the glory, Father, in Jesus' precious name. In the precious name of Jesus. God bless you, you may be seated. This morning, time, time is a challenge. But the Lord will help us. It, is, it doesn't take God eternity to do that which is eternal. I want to share with you this morning something that will change your life forever. Let me tell you, it doesn't take so much to make impact in life. It takes secrets. Only a man who understands secrets can be a victor and a ruler in this life. As important as hard work is, hard work is not so important when you compare it side by side with secrets. You should have known by now. Somebody said, humorously, he said if it were by hard work, the Bible pushers would have been the richest men in this world. So hard work, as important as it is, is nothing compared to your understanding of spiritual secrets. The day you understand secrets in the realm of God, you become a victor. You become a ruler. You become an overcomer. Most times, the crisis of our lives is a crisis of ignorance. Jesus said, rather, Peter said, He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So from the realm of God, when God looks at us, we lack nothing. He didn't say he will give us. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. He said according as his divine power. By his authority. He has given unto us. He a past tense. He is not given to us. He will not give, it, give to us. He has given us. All things that pertain to life and godliness. But he said it is through the revelation. It is through the epignosis. It is through the knowledge of him who has come into glory and virtue. So when you see a believer struggling, God has nothing to do about it. God has done everything. A believer who wants to go ahead in life must invest to lay hold of secret. That's why I say, by the truth, say it not. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, the Bible said, They that do know their God, he said they shall be strong and do exploit. So exploit is a function of revelation. When a man is struggling, sometimes we struggle and we think by crying God will do something. God has already done everything he can do. The problem is the problem of ignorance. Please don't be distracted by the children. The crisis of our lives is a crisis of ignorance. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people, even though you belong to God and you will assume that your father has all the authority, God himself says you will be destroyed if you don't have understanding. That means a man who lacks understanding, a man who lacks knowledge, even though he's with God, God cannot help him. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That was God talking. If therefore behoves everybody who 
us to receive an intervention from God to lay hold on knowledge. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why we emphasize the gospel. Because without the knowledge of God, man has no hope in this kingdom. But unfortunately, many believers lack knowledge. This morning, I want to share something with you that will make you a master and a decider of the circumstances of your life. If you can get it, your story is about to change. And I, like the rain, let your glory fall. Like fire, like the rain, let it fall. Like fire, like the rain, let your glory fall. Because the earth has 
turn around the sun, it is going to bring them new possibilities. This is not bring visitation. It is the wisdom, the secret, and the understanding to take advantage of those seasons that makes the difference. And this is where many believers lack understanding. Somebody has been in business struggling for years. God shows up and says he's about to promote the best. The best is aware. Sometimes God sends men graciously. And then prophets come to tell them, this is their season. They are aware. But they look back after many years, nothing happens. A lady reaches the age of marriage. God tells her her husband is coming. She goes for meetings. Prophets confirm it that this is the season for their marriage. They wait two years, three years, four years, five years back. Till not yet married. Because they lack understanding. Many people can let that of heaven. They were supposed to be in school. But those seasons come. They don't know how to take advantage of the evil that's in that season. The season passes. Jesus, in Luke chapter 19, verse 44, he was entering Jerusalem. And the Bible said he lamented over Jerusalem. He said, Because now it was not the time. Of that visitation. The worst tragedy that will happen to a man in this life is his inability to understand when God is visiting and to know what he needs to do. He will be alive, yet his purpose will pass him by. He will be alive, his purpose will elude him. Now, did he is a wretched life and live this world without impact? The knowledge of activating cities, the things to do, they are too important. Times of visitation. This morning is another strategic time in the spirit for us. We are going to enter this season, but to maximize this season, you need to know what you need to do. Because there are definite codes that are connected to every season, and only men who know how to press it can maximize it. I have seen this evil for many years. I have studied the lives of men, and I have seen this season. Ten people. Laboring and fasting together, they go to the bush, they fast for seven days, they pray. Then later in their lives, only one of them makes it. And then the six others, you can't find them anywhere. And then sometimes they reconnect after 20 years. And then you see the same people that were praying together, trusting God together. One of them is the high flyer, the other one is still struggling with house rent. And then out of six parties, a man who knows how to maximize his now that is in the house and he calls it a breakthrough. People you went to school with, 30 years, 15 years down the line, they are flying American like they are going to their backyard. They are commanding influences everywhere. And then you see them, they are still struggling, looking for a job. And then the man gives you 100,000. You see, it's a breakthrough. Some come to post and say, look at you, you were classmates. Your classmates now owns companies. He sees you. He visits your heart. He gives you a car. You call it a breakthrough. What is the difference between you and that man? He understands how to maximize seasons. There is a dimension of God that if you violate, what you call a blessing is a cause. What you receive and you celebrate, it's supposed to be the things you give people every day. But the error is because you don't know how to maximize your season. We see people who allow their seasons come and go every day and they relax, they cry. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he was crying on their behalf. He said, Because thou knowest not the times of their visitation. Many have lost the times of their visitation. Because they don't know how to maximize the seasons of their lives. You see a young lady who is supposed to be a mother of four getting married at the age of 35. And she says, Yes, we thank God for his intervention. But if that lady knew how to maximize her seasons, maybe she would have married at the age of 23. But when the angel of marriage visited her, she was wasting her life. At 35, she was her first child supposed to be left in school. By the time she's 50, her first child will be 21. What she doesn't know is that even the destiny of her seed, she has 
brought them value. Because when that child is supposed to be a governor, that's when the child is graduating from the university. Because the woman doesn't understand the sequence of life. Her wastefulness of her life also becomes a negative effect on her child. The time her child is supposed to be dirty and ruling over things in this world, her child is 10 years old. And then the child comes into this world disadvantaged because the lady doesn't know the times of her visitation. When God was prompting her, she thought life was pleasure. We don't understand the intelligence that is in this world. When God created the tree, he didn't need to come creating trees anymore. He put the seed in the tree. So the season of the next generation of the tree is inside of that tree. If that tree fails to produce seed, as far as God is concerned, that tree will die. That is why God destroyed the big tree. Because the tree's refusal to maximize the season is also a violation of the possibility of the next generation. Every time the man violates the season, he robs the next generation of their own advantage. That was the cause that ran through Israel for many generations. When men should wake up, you see boys of 30 years wasting their lives because they don't understand that it's not just about them, that the next generation to come depends on them. Not knowing how to maximize it is the cost of many people. You pray for them, lay hands on them, anoint them, but they waste everything that God gives them. The greatest prophets, Jesus said they were slain in Jerusalem. He said he lamented. He said because thou knowest God the times of thy visitation. For those of us who are young here, don't waste your destiny on the altar of temporary pleasure. Just take you away from your destiny because you have no idea what was written concerning you. I want to show you something this morning that will help you to understand the blueprint of your destiny. Maybe you thought it was about your job act. So you run around with the young people and become an area poor. You don't know you are robbing yourself of a glorious destiny. Seasons, the sons of Isaac, he said they have understanding of the times and of the season. If you waste the season when you should be preparing, having fun, you will pay for it with your life. When Esau was supposed to be building himself, he was living for pleasure. The Bible says when he came back, went for it bitterly, but he never received it again. Seasons, many people lose their seasons. Most of the prayers we pray now are not necessary. The crisis is because we wasted our seasons. We wasted. A woman that God made her womb to be a gate, to create possibilities and dimensions in the natural, that woman converts herself to become a sex worker. Because she wants to fix a good reborn. And then after 15, 20 years, he comes back crying to God. Her resources were mobilized from heaven 20 years ago. But she didn't understand this. Children, you will wake your eyes and ask him, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. We are about to enter a new season. I need to tell you this thing so that you maximize it. The pastor can do his best by praying for you. But if you waste your season, there is nothing you can do about it. Samuel said, I will not sin against God by not praying for you. But his own labor upon the life of Saul was a waste. Because Saul was a man in back and forth personality. So even though Samuel was faithful in his office, a prophet, there was little or nothing to do for, for some. I want to show you things that you need to do. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus began to reveal to us the secret of unlocking seasons. You know, I told you the power of a season is not in the time, the power of a season. Is in your secret, your understanding of the secret of downloading its possibilities. Because if you don't know how to download its possibilities, you may talk about it, but it will not come to pass. Jesus appeared to me at the age of seven. 
I saw him again at the age of 12. And he told me he was sending me to the nation as an apostle. But God began to announce me at the age of 31. What if I rose early enough? What if I didn't waste those years? What if I committed to his government sufficiently? Men like David became national figures at the age of 17. Timothy, national figures at the age of 17. Impact in the kingdom is not a function of age. What is the quality of your relationship with God? Until you refuse to God and submit to his government, the secret of unlocking system will not work in your life. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7, Jesus said, and he said unto them, they came asking Jesus, when will these things be? These things that you speak about, we believe in you, we know we are part of this, but when will these things be? And Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So the key for unlocking seasons is the authority that manipulates that season. So Jesus was telling them, knowing about the season is not your prerogative. And even if you do, it's not important. The most important thing in the season is the authority that unlocks it. So every season that comes to your life, the only way to walk in the fullness of that season is your understanding of how to align with that authority. The moment you are in disagreement with that authority, that season will pass you by. Because the key for unlocking season is locked up in spiritual authority. It is authority that unlocks it. Now, authority is different from power. You may have power to do a lot of things, but authority works in the spirit realm. You only see the manifestation in time. Power works in time. Authority works in the spirit. For we preachers, you can find yourself operating in a certain dimension for many years. You will fast, you will pray, you will give. Everything you need to do, you will remain there. Until you understand a season has come. And then that season comes with its demands. The moment you align with that season, you are shifted immediately to another level. The same things you were doing, you will do those same things, but you see the different results. Power was able to sustain you at the level, but the moment authority came, it brought promotion. So you are doing the same thing you are doing, but your results become different. We were preaching the gospel for many years. God came and told me in 2019 March, I will begin to announce you. The same messages I preached. It's not like I started preaching a new message, a new revelation. The same messages I preached that were littered everywhere, I collected some of them and put online. And in 14 days, I was rid of certain nations. What was the difference? What has happened to the message? The season has changed. As I was entering 2019, the Lord came to me and he said, There is a temptation coming your way, don't fall. So the key for entering that level of pain and influence was not in the fact that the season was coming. It was my obedience to the instruction. He said, don't fall. And because God helped me to stand, the same thing I had began to produce a different result. Those messages were blessing the people that were listening to them. But the moment the season was unlocked, the scope changed. The influence changed. The impact changed. Because seasons are unlocked by authority. That is why every time God wants to promote a man, the laws become different. He says, Dear me, if the righteousness of God be did, he said, from faith to faith. So if you want to advance from one level of spiritual prosperity to another, it's not a new layer of righteousness is revealed to you. Right standing with the government of God. Many people violate the law and the protocol of righteousness. They know God wants to do something, but they fail to follow the demands of that season. Every season comes with a demand. Your obedience to the demand of that season is your alignment with the authority that unlocks that season. Jesus was in Nazareth for 30 years. They only knew him as a carpenter. 30 years! 
But when the season of manifestation came, the man got up from his house and went straight to John. John had been baptized. Where were you? He understood seasons. And when he went to John to be baptized, John said, No, I should be baptized of you. He said, So far it to be so for now. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. The power to unlock that season was locked up in the divine. This is where a lot of mistakes pay. We come to church, we sing, we worship God, we cry, we give up, we give sin, but we don't know the things that promote us. If God wants to promote a man, He brings a new quota of righteousness. The moment you walk into it, you have activated that authority on your behalf. Suffer it to be so for now. That was Jesus, the Son of God, speaking. He didn't say, Because I'm the Son of God, anytime I want to save the world, I will save the world. There were many blind people in Nazareth. He didn't heal one. Many cripples, he didn't heal one. He was still the Son of God. But he said, So far, it to be so for now. As if it was not enough. He allowed John, we call it humiliation, but it's an economy in the spirit. Some of the things you call embarrassment, it was God working on you. In 2016, I didn't know that my season was closed. And God led me to my friend's church. My friend, we lived together in the same house. And as I started fellowshipping with him, I said, Okay, well, let me just stay with you here. He said, I have a meeting that I can fellowship with you. And if there's anything I can do, fine. Both of us were submitted to Apostle of Yosan. Both of us lived in the same house. My friend carried me to the Osho unity. I said, John the Osho, that in this church we grow from the, from the, we grow through the ladder. <laughs> Both of us were ministers in heaven because I said we go to church on Sunday morning. My own friend said we grow through the ladder, and we carry me and I the Osho unit. I have, I had my master's degree. At that time, we have not even graduated from the university. I had my master's degree, and he was on the campus church. And we come to church and stand at the door, welcome to the house, giving people a bell. When they have their convention and people come for remnant, remnant, there was a minister. I will stand in front the way these guys are standing like this. The remnant pastors will look at me. What's happening? What, what's going on here? That's when you will know that promotion is not about coming the Bible. Promotion is not about talking God. Promotion is the quality and the texture of your yieldedness to the government of the Holy Spirit. Stay there! One year, six months, eight months, I was a usher in my friend's church. For those five years, eight months, when the church closed, I wait. He does all his leaders with him, carry his bag and follow him. And we go to the house and we become friends. When we go home, we become friends. One year, eight months, my own friend. Lord, what is this? I didn't know what was going on. I died. Until a point came when it became normal for me. I was doing the Russian work, I was having fun. At first, I was conscious of the fact that I'm a graduate, I'm a master's degree holder. But the point came, I didn't remember it anymore. At first, I was conscious, come on, why would I be serving these children? The point came, I didn't remember it anymore. I didn't know that that period that the Lord was dealing with me, He was reorganizing my soul to be able to handle glory and power. Most of the things you call embarrassment, they are schools of the spirit. Those are the things that will help you maximize the seasons that are opening over your life. Because seasons are activated by authority. When those seasons were gone, even himself knew that it would be a sin for me to continue with what I was doing. And I passed the test. I passed the test. As the seasons are unlocked today, most of you will leave and go to your shop. And there's something we have to walk in quiet. The Holy Ghost says, Keep quiet. You will not be aware that it is the texture of your obedience that unlocks the powers of his sin. Most of you will go to your office a lot of crisis. You want to go, you want to act, and the Holy Ghost says, Come down. You keep quiet, you are dying. You are dying. Because the possibility of that season will only walk through the weakness of your spirit. And that's what the Holy Ghost is death spirit to teach you. And if you fail to pass the test, even though the prophecies are come forth, the season will be resonated over your head, you will never enter. The laws activate the system. 
to activate the system is very easy. It's very easy. Because the authority to unlock the system is has now been given to us in the name. Anybody that knows how to invoke that name can unlock the system. But walking in it is the control of obedience. So as we unlock the system this morning, as you go back, your path to maximizing the system is in your obedience to the utterance of God and the prophetic instructions that keep coming from the altar. Sometimes God wants to unlock a system and He gives a man a, a, a demand and the man fails. Did you read the life of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22? God promised Abraham many years ago that he will be blessed in all things. All things! Here was Abraham, he had given birth to his son. The 25 years, the teacher was just to help him learn the way of faith. So Abraham learned faith for 25 years and God was not moved. God didn't say, okay, you are growing old. God was where he was. When Abraham succeeded in learning faith, he gave him a child. But the greatness had not come. The only way he was going to walk into that greatness was to pass the demand of the system. And when Isaac was grown up, he said, take thy child, thy only child, whom thou lovest, and offer him to me as a sacrifice. What? How? What? Is that his name? You promised me this child. I waited for 25 years. Now this child is growing. So all together we'll be around 35 or something years. And then you now come and say, I should go and kill this child. This is the voice of the devil. Have you not been in that situation where you were trusting God for a particular amount of money? You were trusting God for money and then the money came. The moment the money came, God now said, take that money, go and put it on the altar. <laughs> see why many people remain small. They come to church. They see the rich giving like foolish people. They say it's because they are rich. No, they are not giving because they are rich. They are rich because they are giving. The farmer will keep the little he has and remain little. Even when God is speaking, he's thinking of the money he wants to buy. That's why he remains at the level of money. But the rich man understands the law. All he has, God said, give the rush and drop it. And then this year he gave 1,000. Next year he gave 10,000. The next one he gave 100,000. The next time he gave 1 million. And then he comes this immediately. Because they have money, that's why they are showing. Keep your own there and you will remain with that change you have for 30 years. The law of activating system is the law of obedience. <laughs> Take thy time. The instructions didn't make sense. Abraham knew he told Sarah that day the family was scattered. So there was no need to tell Sarah. He managed with the child from the house to say we are going to worship God. And in Genesis 22, verse 5, even the men that walked with Abraham, he didn't tell them. Abraham told them, We are going up to worship God. Because even the guards will stop him. They will say, No, this is no, it's not God. He didn't even tell the guards that followed him. He went to the mountain. And when he was about to kill the child, then God speaks from heaven. He said, now I know. What do you mean, now you know? Are you not the one that called the omniscient God? I thought you knew everything. But the man needed to be tested in order to qualify for the season that was open. He said, now I know. Now I know that thou fearest me. And he said, God swore by his day that he blessed it, I will bless you. That was the same thing. He told Abraham over 35 years ago. Now Abraham is about to enter because this is where he was able to demonstrate the quality of obedience that was that dimension. Now I know that you fear me. In blessing, I will bless you. And in Genesis 24, verse 1 to 2, the Bible said Abraham was old and stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed him in all things. Is it not funny that we have Christians now? We are all seeking Abraham's blessings as a man. And we seek him for 20 years and there is no blessing in our lives. Abraham blesses a man. We think spiritual things are things. We want to rob God. He said to the free world, I will show myself free world. When you want to show God you are crooked, he will keep you there for a long time. The quality of your obedience is what determines the seasons you can activate. 
Now I know that fear me. What are those things that God have insisted you do that you have been used to do for the past five years? That is why it looks as if prophecy is not working. The prophecy has worked again and again. You have failed to take delivery because your obedience is lacking. He said, when your obedience is fulfilled, then you can avenge what that is obedience. We are raising a generation of Christians that have no regard for the authority of God. The God you have no regard for his authority is the God you are hoping to bless. This is why we have crisis every day. This season that is about to be opened, you can open up different dimensions of this season every day of your life. There are times when in one year we notice three, four, five, six promotions. Because you know God is light. I don't want to enter into quantum benefits now because I've seen young people. God is light. This light you are seeing, you think is just straight. Life is not a continuum. Life is in patterns. In patterns. We call it quantum. But the frequency of the release is too high. That's why you think it's a ray. It's actually dispensed in packet. Everything God wants to give you comes to you in packet. But you determine the frequency by the secrets you understand. Because God is light. If God gives you everything he wants to give you now, he will destroy you. He says, I will not drive out your enemy in one day. Because if I do, the land becomes desolate. And the beast will come in and devour you. So the degree of your enlargement is what determines the volume of blessing you can accommodate. And your enlargement is not to charge. It is the secret you apprehend. Every city you enter, you can maximize it at will. Depending on your level of understanding and quality of obedience. The way to maximize the season is to take advantage of what the authority of God and calls on. And the authority of God and calls on the name of God. This is Remember the Bible said, God swore by his name that in blessing, he will bless the brother. The authority of God resonates on the name of God. The name of God is the seal of his authority. Listen. In the natural realm, we use names for nomenclature, we use names for identification. But it's different from the spiritual realm. So if I say, oh, my friend will say, yes, um, can I help you? Because he thinks that name is to identify him. But in the spiritual realm, names are deeper than identification. Names in the spirit realm are signatures of authority. So the signature of authority of a man in the spirit is designated by his name. So the authority of God is locked up in the name of God. Every time a man through obedience enters a season, then his understanding of the authority of the name of God becomes a tool for continually unlocking the dimensions and the possibilities of that season. But unfortunately again, many believers don't understand the weight of the name of God. So the guy is going in the car and the driver breaks, say Jesus. And the Jesus he caused was out of fear, not out of revelation. The first thing I've told you this morning is what? Continuous obedience as a precursor for entering into the season. The second thing I want to show you now is using the name of God by revelation as a key of maximizing your season. Because when true obedience will enter the season, by your revelation of the name of Jesus, you begin to maximize this season. Remember, when God wanted to bless Abraham, He said, Your name shall no longer be Abraham, but Abraham. So, everywhere Abraham went, He began to utter a new kind of name. I am no longer an assumed father, I am now the father of kings. So, that name was a witness of the new thing God wants to begin to do in his life. So as this season is unlocked, if you go back and then you are talking the things you were talking yesterday, even though you are in a new possibility, you cannot maximize it. That's why God comes to a man. He said, I will make you great. Or he tells the man, you are great 
and the man goes back is lamenting about the crisis of yesterday. He has not entered into the reality of today. The moment he enters into the reality of today, he begins to confess to me the way God says it is. That was how God created the world. When God was creating the world, everything God created in Genesis chapter 1, it did not appear. It was in Genesis chapter 2 that most of the things he created began to appear. And I will show you from the Bible. The Bible says God brought forth the green plant and it came out of the ground. And in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible said God had not yet made man. So there was no green vegetation of the land because there was no man to fill the ground. So what God said, where did this seed appear? He saw it in the spirit. As this season is proclaimed over you, it could be declared to be a season of abundance. So when you get home, it doesn't matter what you see. The moment Abraham was able to see it, he began to call himself Abraham. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 4 verse 18, it said he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. What was he doing? He was saying what God said. Imagine if you were in Abraham's generation and a man of 100 years who is impotent now wakes up all of a sudden and says, Now I am father of kings. I am father of kings. You will say, Oh, this crisis has made him mad. Ah, this thing has affected him. But he understood how the realm works. He knew what the realm was. So he called his circumstance what God calls it. That's how you minister in the spirit. You come to somebody who is sick. Obviously, the person is sick. But when you come, you will not say you are sick, you say you are healed. Because you are calling what God calls. And the moment faith is released, the person becomes what God calls. So the name you call your circumstance is the resource you will have. When you enter a season, it becomes important that your utterance change. Most of you seasons have come and gone. There are some who have even entered, but you have not walked in the reality. Because you talk your circumstance, you don't talk what God says. Every season God unlocks the potentials of those seasons are locked up in the name. This is why the children of Israel have many names for God. Every dispensation had a name for God. Ever had need and God came and said, Yes, truly you are dead, but I will give you a child. So he now saw a God that had the ability to provide all his name. And he said his name is called El Shaddai. So when they related with God, they related with God based on the possibilities they see in Him that was available for their citizens. He was in need, he was in lack, he was in want. And then here comes the Spirit and say, I will provide all you need. He now began to call that Spirit the multi-breasted one. So every time Abraham went before God, he said, the multi-breasted one. The multi-breasted one. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called God El Shaddai. And this is why they could not lack in their lives. Abraham needed a child. The El Shaddai gave him a child. Isaac was in Gera. There was poverty in the land. People were running to Egypt. He wanted to run to Egypt because they stay still in this land. And Isaac began to relate with the El Shaddai. Isaac dug well in the dry ground. And the El Shaddai made water to come out of it. So long as he was calling El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Everything he needed was supernaturally provided because he knew that the potentials of that city was locked up in the understanding of the God that provides all things. So he said, El Shaddai. These guys knew this secret so much that even when they blessed their children, they blessed them with those names because those names were like cactus that hosted all of those dimensions. So Jacob will bless his children and he said, El Shaddai bless you. Adonai keep you. All of them mean different things. Adonai means Lord, El Shaddai means supplier. So when he wants to supply, he says, Let the supplier bless you. When he wants to preserve, he says, Let the master, the Lord, keep you. They understood the place of utterance. A new season is coming upon your life. It's important what you say. Because your obedience may be complete, but your language will be wrong. And if your language is wrong, everything that is available you cannot maximize. Israel. When, in, when going out of Egypt and there was war, there was no way they could conquer their enemies. Their enemies were stronger than them. And instantly, God gives Moses wisdom. He says, sit on the mountain. And so long as you lift your hand, 
when we come back. And Moses was there, his hand lifted. As so long as the hand was up, Israel was winning. His hand come down, Israel loses. Aaron and all had to support him. When the battle was over, they now changed what they called God. They began to call him Jehovah Nisi. Because that season, what God was doing for them was to cover them like a banner. So their utterances were consistent with the possibilities and provisions of the season. So when you are blessed, be sensitive to hear. Don't be religious. Believers come to church, you are blessing them, they are doing like this. They think it by closing their eyes and nothing happens to you because you are gesticulating. You need to understand the secrets that bind these things and make them happen. You will hear a man of God come and say, This season is a season of divine health. But the person didn't hear what God said. He goes back, he falls sick, and he's struggling, trying to. What did God say about this season? The Israelites knew it, so they carried it as their heritage. Every time they laughed, they went to invoke the name. So when Isaac was blessing Jacob, he didn't bother to give him the facet. He said, I bless you with corn and wine. The name he gave Jacob, anywhere Jacob goes to, that name can produce corn and wine. They are no regard for inflation. I bless you with corn and wine. So he gave him Elshadai. And this was Jacob. Wanting to bless the sons of Joseph in Genesis chapter 48. And he began to talk to them about the same El Shaddai that appeared to him. These are things how these guys walked. They understood spiritual laws. They had mastery over secrets. But the believer talks anyhow. Today, if somebody gives you 10,000, they say, I am blessed to thank God. Tomorrow, he needs money. Money doesn't show up. It's the way that they happen everywhere. Ah. How can the mouth that bless us? How can the fountain of fresh water bring salt water? So we choke our possibilities. And we are not taught. So we don't understand the power that is on the tongue. He said, life and death is on the power of the tongue. He said, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The fruit is what you say. It becomes a reality. The name for the season must become the banner over your life. Why do we call Jesus Savior? Because in the season of salvation, God was no longer coming to us as Jehovah support. He was not coming to us as Jehovah Ra. He was coming to us as Savior. So the name of God that the angel introduced to Mary, he said it shall be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So the reason he was called Jesus was because salvation had come. So the name was consistent with the season. Every party that through obedience followed salvation demand, which is to believe in the star and confess the sin. And as you are saved, then you carry the name of Jesus everywhere you go. This is why we call Jesus every time there is a name. Because we know that the name Jesus has the power to invoke salvation. But if you don't understand that everything God wants to do, and all the abilities of God are locked up in the name, you will talk the way you choose to talk. Because you will not understand that your greatest authority is in your world. Your greatest authority is not in the hands of the military. It is in what you say. But many don't understand. Seasons. A season is about to open over us. And the first demand of that season is to be careful to obey everything that that season dictates. The season may dictate that for you, begin to give liberally. For you to maximize that season, giving must become your life. The season may demand that for you, no quarrel, no argument, no backbiting, no gossip. They look so long as you obey the demand of that season, everything that season has become for you. And the season may demand that for you is prayer and fasting. The season may demand that for you is investment. If you violate the demand of that season, even if God appears in your bedroom, it will not amount to anything. This is what believers don't know. A lot of people have encounters. They see angels, they see light, and then they think that because they saw light, their life will change. Your life doesn't change because you saw something. 
it is your obedience to the law that that spirit brings that changes your life. Many believers are lawless. And it's a time for us to come back to find out what it is that God is demanding of us. This season that that is going to be unlocking over us a few moments, it will come with demands, I assure you. Most of you may go to your house and it will become difficult for you to cost it. Most of you may go to your house, it will become difficult for you to correct. Most of you may go to your house, those things you wanted to give that you couldn't give, if you don't give, you will not sleep. Because for you to enter into the fullness of the season, you must become liberal, you must become meek, you must become kind. These are the laws that come with your season. And if you obey those laws, everything that sin has to offer will just be happening to you. You will sit in your house and you say, ah, you say that God loves me too much. You are the one pursuing money. See, there are people that since they break today, they have received more than 10 alas. Not because they supply goods and services. Through obedience, they have been strategically positioned in a place of blessing. Some people, they really, their back is gone down because of vibration from Allah. And all of us are sons of God. What is the difference? How did they get there in life? It is by progressive obedience. Every time you violate instruction, every time you violate the demands of the season, every time you violate the instructions of God, you are setting yourself up to be small. The reason we struggle, the reason we are small, is not because our God is weak. Because our obedience quarter is not clean. We need to consciously begin to find out. I told us that Paul was the last of the apostles. So naturally, by chronological order, he was supposed to be the least. But if you study the operation of the apostolic and even their contribution in the scriptures, you discover that Paul was greater than them all. When Paul met Jesus, Paul said, Lord, what will you have me do? He knew that a new season had come in his life. He was going in a certain direction. But God had activated the new season. And instantly by the spirit of wisdom, Paul didn't tell Jesus, what is this thing for me? That was the question Peter asked. He said, we have left all and followed you. What is in this thing for us? There is nothing wrong in demanding from God. But there is a higher kind of request. For Paul, when he met Jesus, he knew a new season had come. He said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And Paul became the greatest of all the apostles. There are two questions we will ask this morning. The first question is, Lord, as you open this season, what will you have me do? It doesn't matter whether you are young or old. When the spirit brings a question of obedience, age is not a factor. Because it is the supply of the spirit that will make the difference. Age is not a factor. Most of the men that are shaping their world today, if you read their story, they began when they were 18 years old. In 1979, Bishop David Oedeku called the whole Nigeria for a three days fast. He is about 66 today. In 1979, how can a young boy like that have the audacity to think he can call Nigeria for a fast in a military era? So when he is speaking with authority today, he is not speaking with authority because he's a good man. He understood those secrets when he was young. David was not shaking his way because he had become an old king at the age of 17. David could confront Goliath. So age is not what makes the difference. It is the extent to which you know the spirit that is calling you into depths. Most of us, the Lord calls us by different kinds of instruction. We violate it. The reason we pray so much and we have so little is because we don't understand that our result most of the time is locked up in our obedience. Jesus says, seek me first the kingdom. Every other thing shall be added unto you. So Jesus didn't even ask us to pray for food. He didn't ask us to pray for prayer. He said that is what a beggar is doing. You know who is a beggar? A beggar is not a sinner. A pagan is a devotee of a religion. A pagan is a religious man. He said they are the ones that ask for clothes and ask for bread. He said the lilies of the field. He 
He said that beautiful and mighty as Solomon is, is not as arrayed as one of them. He said, Your heavenly father knows that you need this thing. So, what then is the cure for lack? What then is the key for abundance? It's not necessarily prayer. You may pray and receive, but it's not necessarily prayer. It is obedience to the demands of the government of God. A man of obedience is a man of abundance. Abraham did not pray once for bread. He didn't pray once for cattle. But he lived a life of continuous obedience. And when Abraham was old, the Bible says the Lord had blessed him in all things. Our obedience quota in this season is very important. In the moment we are going to bow our heads and ask the Lord, Lord, we have come to another season. What will you have us do? I have come to another season. Will this one still be another calendar year? God forbid. What will you have me do? There is something you need to do because you know that your success story depends on the things you do. It doesn't take God anything to change our story. It takes God nothing. You may sit down and calculate and say, Kai, this is my dream. When will I get there? As I am now, all I have in my bank account is ten thousand. How will I get there? You don't know how skill is work. If God wants to orchestrate a change in your life, it's mysterious. You can step out of your house in your job barracks and your primary school mate just shows up driving on the street. And then he tells you he came from America yesterday. Why he came to Nigeria, he doesn't know. What are you doing here? He said, Oh boy, see me. He said, No, 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 no. You mean you? They go, they go. He said, Oh boy, see the go now. And they go with this one. He said, No, 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 no. Abba, they go. He said, Baba, Baba, they go. You will be going home for all of this one. He said, no, 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 no. The next thing he carries you to a car stand and says, pick in the car. Ah! Your budget could not imagine car. Even if they told you to imagine yourself driving a car, it would be hard. Your brain can't capture it. But that's how mysteries work. The Bible says the step of the righteous is ordered by the Lord. There's a place for your abundance, but only by your obedience can you walk there. This is what many violate. So they cry, praying and begging God. Meanwhile, God has given the formula. He says, seek ye first the kingdom. All these things shall be added. So we seek things instead of seeking obedience. This is the crisis of our lives. This morning, we are going to ask God. The biggest things that God do for you are not the crazy things you see. The biggest things God does for you are the things He walked into your spirit. That's why men become invincible. You see a man walking in blessing every day of his life. You say, how is this thing happening? Even if the negative supernatural they know, if you like, go and seek a witch doctor today. There is no spirit that gives to a man without obedience. Every spirit walks by laws. And when God makes a declaration, the manifestation is tied to your obedience. Manifestations don't just come to pass because God decreed. They come to pass because men are willing to obey. This morning we will ask a question. Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? If you know what to do, you will get what you should. Lord, what will you have me do? That's our prayer this morning. And as we depart from here, God gives us instruction, either through His Spirit, or through his servant. As we live, we will speak it. The Bible says, carry with you words. Carry, carry words. Why do you think the elders of old were so bold? A man will come to you and say, before I bless you, go and bring the best medicine. What do you mean by that? A man wants to bless you. He says, go and empty your bank account. Are you okay? The man knows that every word you speak is more important than your one million in your account. So he wanted to bless his son. He said, Go and get me there. Let me eat, and then my soul can bless you. That man knows what he carries. 
This is why great men don't throw walls around. They know that their walls have the power to change things. As you live here and God gives you the instruction, carry it as your insurance and keep speaking that word that God tells you to speak. For Abraham, he said he was strong, giving thanks. He was speaking in the direction of what God spoke. How many of us have declared that we are sick? You just sense headache, and the next day you have told 30 people already, I am sick, I am sick. You will never say, I am healed. Go and take your drug, but never say, I am sick. The Bible says, let no man in Zion say, I am sick. He said, when men are cast down, he says, say, I am lifted up. He didn't say, when men say they are cast down, men are actually cast down. He said, when men are cast down, don't talk casting down, even if you are down. When you are down, that is when you should talk up. As you leave this season, speak according to the demands of the season. When you obey the laws of the season, then talk what the season says. Never speak what God is not saying. You will set yourself up. And even God himself will be helpless on your matter. He said, my people, my people. He didn't say strangers. He said they are destroyed. If they are your people, why do you allow them to be destroyed? For the lack of knowledge. That means God tried to help them, but they can't. The Lord tells them, I want to bless you. But they go out and they say, not in the walk. I'm going to increase you. They go out and they say, nothing they walk. Every time God tries, God cannot reach out to them because they use their voice and their mouth to destroy what God is creating. Every season has laws. And the secret of downloading the potentials of the season, they are simply two. One is obeying the demands of that season. Two is confessing the possibilities that is revealed in that season. And you will discover that your lives will change. Do we bow down and talk to the Lord this morning? This morning I came with very simple instructions so that everybody can understand. If not every day we teach mysteries and we talk uh, deep spiritual realities. I try to say it in a simple way this morning so that if you don't remember anything, when next you go to your shop and you want to gossip and you lose your peace, know that the law of the city is what is confronting you. When next you want to malign somebody's name and you lose your peace, know that it's the law of the city. When next you want to rebel and you lose your peace, know that it's the law of the city. It may be something you want to do, but remember, the more you go in the direction of disobedience, the more you make your life difficult. When next you want to talk fear, know that the season does not permit it. When next you want to talk unbelief, know that the season does not permit it. If you know what to do, you will have what you should have. The problem of many people is because their life is not gathered together by laws. The problem with most people is because their tongue is not controlled by laws. They just talk what they feel and they do what they like. Men of honor don't behave like that. It's only animals that, that do what they feel like doing. So a goat sleeps with the sister because he felt like having sex. A goat sleeps with the mother. A goat gets off and faces this direction. He talks this direction. No law around his life. That's why it's an animal. But the Bible says a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. Our life was be gathered and connected together by laws. Every season of your life has laws. Every season. I have fasted and prayed for many years. But this season that I am in, only one thing God is emphasizing. Concentration. Concentration. So I know that I have to keep retreating every week. And if I don't obey, and that instruction is lifted, then everything that God brings for me this season, I will lose it. It's not enough to say I fasted for 10 years. This season, God is saying, wait upon me. Wait upon me. If you violate it, you will discover that the thing you are doing and seeing results, a point will come, it will become like chaff. Chaff. You were seeing if people were crying, falling everywhere. God comes and says, There is a new season. Wait upon me. Wait upon me. 
and you are busy, you are running there and there. And then you come to church, you shout. Nothing happens anymore. You become like child. Because that power is not necessarily what you are doing, it's in the supply of the spirit. And we ask the Lord this morning. Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? I didn't come to speak to everybody. I came to speak to the people that this season is fully for. The people that will truly maximize this season. And they will have testimonies that will blow their minds. Testimonies. Testimonies. What will you have me do, Lord? Talk to the Lord in the privacy of your heart. In the privacy of your heart. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You ancient Zion's king.
Seigneur. Those areas of disobedience, the Holy Ghost will begin to show you. Those are the reasons why God can't bless you. Those are the reasons why you can't move forward. The Holy Ghost will want you to remove that disobedience and drop it at the altar this morning. So check your soul very quickly. That's the first surgery the Holy Ghost will do this morning. I will pray for the sick. But the first surgery is in the soul. As the first may be, you have disobeyed for a long time. The Holy Ghost wants to show you now. Those areas, those are the things that have been that you from moving forward. Sometimes you make the work of pastors very difficult. Fasted, pray, come to prophesy. But the people will not follow the Holy Spirit. You reign, you reign, Shanzayanski. The Holy Ghost have, have shown you, flashed it, flashed it. You know, and you know what? That disobedience will become the reason why you will not enter into the fullness of this system. You want to rededicate yourself, you want to recommit to God and say, Lord, as you help me, I will obey. Listen, when it comes to God, all of us we are like dust. You may be big among men, not before the spirit. Some of us, the area of predominant disobedience is pride. We can never say, I am sorry. Never. And then we choke our soul and God can't flow through us. Pride. Because we don't have the right estimation of the God we are dealing with. This morning, you are here. And there's that area of disobedience that have prevented God from pouring out himself to you. And the Holy Ghost has shown you this morning. I'm not calling any case, I'm not calling any no. And you want to drop it at the altar and say, Lord, I cast this on the altar. Come forward, let me pray for you. You may also be in the choir. Don't be carried away soon. You have seen an area of disobedience. Come and place it on the altar very quickly. We'll be out of here in no time. That's the first thing the Holy Spirit will have been addressed this morning. Those things that have prevented you from entering into the fullness of what God wants to do in your life. Sometimes we think because the man of God lays hands on us, because the man of God prophesies things will change. Things are not magical. They are definite love. The reason we think things will just change is because we are not well taught. You will check your life after 10 years. At best, you will only be surviving. meetings are not the meetings where people lay down on the floor. 
we see that every day. I minister predominantly on campuses. You see people in their hundreds on the floors, screaming, demons running out of people. But most times their lives are not changed because they don't make decisions. Spirits walk with you from the point of your decision because he wants to hold you responsible. You are still in the congregation this morning. The Holy Spirit Himself has shown you an area of disobedience. I am calling on you to come out now. Before we pray for this people, I was not the one that told you. God Himself revealed it to your heart. I didn't say if you are masturbating, come. I didn't say if you are lying, come. If there's an area of disobedience and the Holy Spirit have shown it to you. Come and make commitment. Those of you who are in front, place it on the altar. Tell the Lord, this is it, this is it, this is it. This is what I struggle with. I bring it to you. He said, whoever calls on me, I shall in no wise cast away. The law is to call upon you, is to cry, is to beckon upon the Lord. It may be lying, as simple as it is. It may be fornication. It may be anger. It may be pride. That time when God wants to visit you, that's when that fornication takes a bath. Every July, you find yourself honest. You are strong from January to July. Because the devil has seen that that's the window of your life. You think you have just seen it and asking God for forgiveness. You don't know you are trading your destiny. Drop it at the altar. When God wants to do something new in your life, that's when anger comes and spoils everything. You see, they don't want to prevent them go. Now only then God day. Who told you God day? The God day you are calling, that's the God that you are sent in the person. But you mess it up all the time because of anger, arrogance, and pride. Listen to the God. Tell the Lord, I can't help myself, help me. He said, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't allow anything to rob you of your destiny. Nothing is big enough to rob you of your destiny. Go into the feet of the master. At the feet of the master. At the feet of the master.
from the Lord. He expects them to receive from the Lord. The Lord is about to visit and touch most of you and change your story. Don't be distracted. This is not the time. Precious Holy Spirit, look upon your people right now. Look upon your people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare from the left to the right, from the front to the back, Holy Spirit, touch them. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, run upon us with your presence. Run upon us. I command spiritual activations. I command encounters. I command empowerment. Holy Ghost, touch them. Come on, let's go. 
moment you can play just the keyboard. Play the keyboard. Focus on the Lord. And I pray to you, man. And I pray to you. The light of God shines upon you. The Lord probably tell you that it's not yet too late for you to use. And I've walked with you from a child. From when you were a child. I saw an angel of God began to walk with you when you were nine years old. And the Lord gathered you together. He said, I have put my wisdom in you. And I have seized your wall to bring healing to broken hands. He said, it's not yet too late to use you. Just in case you are about to Please. The Lord brings you a word of confirmation. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit. The hand of God becomes strong now. I stare the waters of your ordination. I stare it from the fountain now. I stare it from the fountain. The angel that have walked with you from a child. I ask that his protection bring upon you now. Holy Spirit, touch now. Thank you, Lord. Use her for your glory. I activate you today. It's well with you, Lord. It's well. It's well. The fire of God upon your life will not be put out. It will not be put out. It will not be put out. I stand the fire. I stand the fire. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
There's a prophetic angel walking with you now. There's a prophetic angel walking with you. It's such a great honor to be here tonight. Standing to represent my father in the Lord, Apostle Arame Osai. And tonight, even as I bring you greetings from the Apostolic Club, all the way from the regions of Makoni, I stand here in the strength of many. And I trust that the Lord will be a mighty blessing to you tonight. Obviously, we are out of time. But as you know, it doesn't take God eternity to do that which is eternal. So in a moment, your story can be turned around forever. And today and tomorrow, in the very short time we have, we we'll trust the Lord to bring you instructions that will constitute the compass to guide your steps in the direction the Lord has carved for you before the foundations of the world. It's possible for you to come to time and become creative and depart from that which was written concerning you before you were born. The reason the gospel is preached is not just to bring you a news about Jesus, but is to compel you to turn it back to the path that was carved for you. Because only then will you have relevance with the Spirit of God eternal. And so tonight, trust in the Holy Spirit to reveal to you that which you must do in time, even as you journey past this realm unto eternity where your destination is. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? And whisper something to the Lord from the very depths of your heart. Tell him you're ready. Your heart is open to receive from the Lord tonight. Come on, whisper it to him very quickly. It's a law of the Spirit that the anointing troubles in the direction of your expectation. Without expectations, you can be in the womb of the Spirit, yet receive nothing from the Lord. Ask the Lord for an impartation tonight. Ask the Lord for a touch of His Spirit tonight. Sabra setela maranda rabos. Raza tele branda zila brahala kabos. Let the Lord Himself whisper to the chambers of your heart. Let the Lord talk to your heart tonight. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. We magnify your name tonight, even as we look up to you for help. As we look up to you for access, for penetration. As we look up to you for an avalanche of your spirit. As we look up to you for another supply of your spirit. That will not only stir us, but bring us back to course as we turn in the path of our lives and destinies. Take all the glory, Father. Take all the honor. In Jesus' precious name. You may be seated. God bless you. We don't have all the time tonight. But I'll be establishing the coordinates that will define the path of our navigation in this conference. Even as we trust the Lord to build on it tomorrow. And the other ministers that come after keep adding the blocks. And at the end of the day, that which the Lord wants to do will be achieved. In Jesus' precious name.
Tonight, I want to share with us on the strategy of the Spirit for maximizing seasons of visitation. It's possible for you to know the word of the Lord. It's possible for you to understand the ways of the Spirit, but be separated and denied from walking in the fullness of what God is doing in a generation. It's possible for you to gain mastery of the word of the Lord. It's possible for you to be equipped in theological intelligence. It's possible for you to become a very expert of exegetical expression and interpretation of scripture, but to be oblivious of the move of the Spirit of God. It's been a crisis that many significant entities had in the different dispensations of the workings of the Spirit of God. Many dedicated to God, committed to God, masters of the word of the Lord, but on the unveiling of the move of God, discovered they did not recognize it, they were not a part of it, because what they thought they understood, what they knew about the Lord, was not consistent with the present revelation position of the Spirit. It's a crisis of every dispensation. It's a crisis of everyone who should be numbered in what God does in the season. The lack of discernment to understand what God is doing. The lack of discernment to interpret the writings of the Spirit of God as consistent with the dispensation. It's the greatest crisis a believer in any dispensation will have. The Bible said in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it said the sons of Isaac, they have understanding of the times and the seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. So a man who has not discerned the season will not know what ought to be done. There are many things we can do in the kingdom, but what ought to be done in the kingdom is a function of your discernment of times and seasons. That is where the present revelation position of God becomes different from the generic way of the Spirit of God. And this discernment oftentimes is lacking because men do not understand the protocol of maximizing the move of God. You can be a student of the Bible, yet be exonerated from the move of God. Unless you understand how to tap into the move of God, you may not count with God. A generation can be lost because of the lack of discernment of that which the Lord is doing. And tonight, in a few minutes before we begin to pray, I want to show you the protocol for maximizing the move of the Spirit of God. You may be zealous for God, be on fire for the Lord, but you may not be part of the move of God. Paul speaking concerning the Jews, he said, I bear the witness that they are zealous for the Lord, but their zeal was without knowledge. This is a crisis that we must look up to and define correctly before our doctrine can have what it takes to raise men of stature in the spirit. You are not ranking because of what you are doing. You are not ranking because of what you know to do. You are ranking because you are accurate with what God is doing in the season. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Of the Bible. What 
that informs the emphasis of our teaching is our discernment of what God is doing in a generation. Our discernment of what God is doing in a season is what informs the emphasis of our doctrine. And every time we lose focus of what God is doing, we will become puppets in the hands of princes. There are many rulers in darkness that have authority over different territories, sustaining intentions to manipulate humankind in order to fulfill their purpose and their agenda. It's a politics in the spiritual realm. Many do not understand. It's not just about what we can know from the Bible. The question is, what is God doing in your generation? That is what we inform the urgency of your service of God. That is what we inform the urgency of your relationship with the Spirit of God. But many do not understand. This season is a season of transition. This season is a season where God is purging a generation in order to begin a fresh move of His Spirit. And when God comes to orchestrate a transition, there are definite protocols that must be followed. These protocols are the things that inform your emphasis. These protocols are the things that inform your commitment even to your jobs, to your school, to your business. Because if you don't know it, you will not be relevant. Jesus showed up before the emergence of Jesus. Prophecy had already captured it. Between the time Jesus was born and the time the clearest prophecy about his coming was given was 700 years. Isaiah prophesied it. Moses spoke about it over a thousand years in the law. He said, The prophet like unto me, with the Lord raised among you. The Pharisees were masters of the Torah. They had 613 laws. They recited these laws to every generation. At the age of 12, boys in Israel could recite the Torah. In fact, you became a man when you are able to recite the provisions of the Torah. Manhood was not conferred on you until you understand the laws of Moses, the ways of God, and you could recite the Torah. Yet, with prophecies and with the law, Jesus showed up walking in Galilee. Nobody recognized him because they did not understand that the move of God is different from generic understanding of the word of God. The crisis of a generation, the inability to discern the move of God. God is raising men, punching souls. There are many people clamoring for prosperity at a time like this. We lack understanding. We cannot define prosperity correctly in this season unless our soul is purged. Because what we make us count in the agenda of God is not how much we have in our account. It is the texture of our soul. So until a man is purged, even if he has a million, he's a pauper in the eyes of God. Because what God is doing in this season is transition. The men that will determine what will happen in the days to come are the men that subscribe to the protocol that this season demands. Doctors of the law, they had a company of council members. They were the ones that gave accreditation to ministries. If the Pharisees do not accredit you, you have no right to do ministry because they were considered to be the custodians of the oracles of God. Yet, Jesus showed up, they could not recognize him. They sat down, deliberated about him, and they sent one of their scholars to him in John chapter 3 from verse 1. And he said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God because no man can do the things that thou doest except God be with him. Who taught you he's a teacher? That is God you are talking to. But they only knew the Torah. They didn't understand the move of God. They recited the Torah. They did not understand the move of God. The one you call a God, you are talking to him, but you can't discern him. So everything they did counted for nothing. Until Jesus will evaluate their work and say you cannot enter the kingdom and you stop others from entering. So all their religious activity became an impediment to the move of the Spirit of God because they lacked discernment. 
The reason you can't pray is because you lack discernment. The reason you can't fast at a time like this is because you lack discernment. The reason you are still talking about immorality at a time like this is because you lack discernment. If you understand that this is a season of recruitment, every one of us will come together and cry. It is what those like this that the Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon his holy mountain, for the day of the Lord cometh. We may go ourselves believers full of the Holy Ghost, but if God comes to check our corporate stature, we may just be like the Pharisees that do not understand the move of God. The church has never been as corrupt as it is now. You gather a hundred people, 50 of them have different addictions, masturbation, immorality, immorality, masturbation. 70 Christians, 60 of them dressed like harlots. We gather in church and we don't understand that God is purging his house. And then the pastor comes, all he's talking about is what to do to prosper. You don't know what prosperity is. He said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. So if your soul does not prosper with God, you are a poor man as far as God is concerned. It's a time to cry. It is for this reason that God raises men, men that can cry against the status quo. The whole society could not discern the move of God. Jesus came, walked for many years, they could not discern him until he called his apostle. He said, Who do men say I, the Son of Man, I am? And they brought the testimony of the Sanhedrin to him. They said, Some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are Isaiah, some say you are one of the prophets. So a whole generation could not discern the move of God. All of them put together were wrong. Who do men say, I, the Son of Man, I am? Nobody knew the answer in the whole generation. All of them reciters of the Torah. All of them readers of the laws of Moses. Who do men say, I am not one man on earth here? I tell you, if we cannot discern the move of God, then the whole generation can be lost. Your prayer, your fasting, all put together, you can be wrong unless you discern. Because that is what will inform the quality of your life, the texture of your life, and everything you commit yourself to, it is going to be a function of your discernment. And an illiterate fisherman spoke by the Spirit, and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. One man was more accurate than the whole generation. This is one of the crises of the body. Many people with many labor, with many revelations, but the church plunges continually into darkness. It's about cloud. There's nothing wrong in having a cloud. The Bible said the glory of the king is in the multitude of the people. But what is the quality of our gathering? What is the ranking of our congregation? We bother little about the things that matter. Those days, they had seasons of party. We have been gathered together and pray for God to walk on their hearts again. Because they knew the only way the man can be honorable before the eyes of the monarch of Zion is the texture of his soul. He said, In a great house, there are many verses. Some of gold, of silver, of wood, and of earth. He said, If a man purges himself, that is when he will be honorable. So we gather people without budget, and we think we are honorable because of our size. He said, God is not restrained to conquer with many. Neither is he limited to conquer with a few. Number doesn't matter with the spirit because it is wisdom that manipulates the tides of humankind. It is wisdom that determines the civilization of the generation. Manipulations in the heavens are the things that result in what we see on earth. Spirits are not limited by number. Not the great God who created the whole world alone. You want to be relevant in this move, you must decide what the Lord is doing.
700 years of prophecy, but nobody recognizing the, the, the Messiah. The daddy knew that the move of God that was coming in that generation was predicated on accurate prophecy. So for 400 years, the devil crippled the prophetic. After Malachi, there was no prophet in Israel for 400 years. Because he knew what God wanted to do We resonate on the voice of a prophet. So while they were on earth struggling about who will be the, the head of the Sanhedrin, while they were struggling about who will be the high high priest, while they were struggling about who was going to carry out the oppression, the devil was crippling the prophetic. Because the devil knew that the day a prophet rose, then the Messiah would come. Meanwhile, men on earth lacking discernment. Lacking discernment of the had to had to pervade. And God himself raised the prophet. And the moment John came, he began to cry. The moment John came, John revealed that the strategy the whole generation was applying was wrong. This is not time to recite the Torah. This is not time to be high priest. This is not time to be influential. The guy was a son of a priest. But the Bible said he departed. He was in the wilderness until the day of his holy fall. He knew that growth in that generation was not in the priestly order. He knew that growth in that generation was not in political influence. He knew that growth in that generation had nothing to do with material prosperity. God needed the voice to cry. And the only way that accurate discipleship could be found was at the backside of the desert. So the guy neglected family, he neglected money, he neglected political position, he neglected the office of the high priest, and he went to dwell in the caves, in the rocky shores. And the Bible said he fed on white honey and locusts. He was dressed in camel skin, but it didn't matter. He had discerned the move of God. You will look at him and say he's a fool. You are not a wise man. Your father is Zacharias. If you follow him, you become a priest. And at the age of 30, you will have nothing you lack. Because everything you want will be supplied for you. The guys knew something. Something was coming from heaven. There was a breaking news from Zion. And he had resonated with it in time. So the only place to stay was at the backside of the desert. It didn't matter. No doctrine of prosperity could affect John. Because John knew that the hand of God was coming from Zion. And only a voice could announce it. They came to me and said, who are you? He didn't say, I'm the son of Zachariah. Who are you? He didn't say, I'm a priest. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make a way for the Lord. The summit of the move of God. Our generation will be without stature. Our generation will be without rank unless we discern the move of God. You know why all your ambitions are earthly? It's because you have not discerned. When you discern correctly the things you pursue, you will let go of them. That's what it means to be crucified with Christ. Only men that discern the move of God understand the alarms of Zion. There are whispers from heaven in every dispensation, but where are the men that can decode it? He said, the trumpet makes an unusual sound. If the trumpet makes an unusual sound, who will prepare for battle? Only men of the sun. Kados, Kados, you might be on the throne. You you are so sincere.
the move of God's spirit cometh to the backside, from the backside of the mountain. The move of God's spirit is coming upon the borders of our habitation. Where are the men that we stand? Where are the men that we stand? Where are the men that we stand? This is why we cry for fire. It is why we cry for fire. That by all means our appetite will die so that God can live through us. A protocol of maximizing the move of the Spirit. Hey, I wish I had time. It's possible for what God is doing in the next generation to be rounded up, but nobody can discern. They were in the wedding in Kenya. The wine was finished, but the party was going on. So church has become about excellence. Church has become about money. Church has become a social gathering. The party is ongoing, but the spirit is no more. Only Mary understood and she came. She said, the wine is out. The wine is out. Jesus said, the time is not yet come. Mary insisted because of the man besieged heaven. The dimensions of heaven cannot hit the earth. He said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. The wine, the wine is gone. The move of God is gone. We have reduced church to a social country. An immoral person comes to church on high heel and on Brazilian way. She has fun with worship and she goes back home to attend the club. The wine is out. The wine, the wine, the wine. In church for 10 years, but you hear nothing that strikes your soul. The wine is out. We are the men that we cry for the next move of God to show up. For the next move of God to show up. People that love God, they know they love God. They are crying every day, Lord help me. But there are no custodians on earth that can bring God to their table. Even when they pursue God to church, the pastor sends them out of heaven. Because he has appetites. Appetites for money. So it's all about fundraising. It's all about excellence. It's all about music stars. It's all about comedy. Where is the book of God? A generation was lying. I didn't come to preach. I came to your land to cry. Because of the men cry, the move of God will die. God, oh, you are mighty on your soul. You are, you are saying, Breaking news from heaven. 
Prayer is not just for getting from God. Prayer is a tool of alignment. So when God speaks, we know there's a man that lived in this world. His name is God Kenneth Hekin. He was relevant in three dispensations of the move of God. His life was given to prayer and fasting. The people that started with him, at some point, some fell with the healing revival. Some fell with the prosperity revival. That prophet was relevant because he was connected to heaven eternally. The protocol of maximizing the move of God. This is not to condemn the old, but the old one's king cannot contain the new one. So God migrates. God migrates because the old generation have plateaued. They have become generous. They have become owners of institutions. But God is still moving forward. God is not located in Nabucha. God is not located in Kaduna. God is not located in Lagos. God is moving through a generation on earth. And we cannot stop with what they stop with. There needs to be a new wine scheme for the new wine. That's why God begins by putting a generation. When we cry and ask men to repent and to purge themselves, it's because God wants to create a new wine scheme. Maybe the generation before, the emphasis was prosperity and we plateau there. The emphasis was healing, we plateau there. And the source of man is now a puppet in the hands of the devil. God is interested in soul, not in prosperity. He's interested in soul, not in healing. He's interested in souls, not in finances. But we plateau with finances, so our soul became heavy. We plateau with healing, so our soul became sinful. God comes again with a fresh fire. So when this protocol begins, it begins with encounter. Encounter. Because the old teacher does not know what to tell you about the new book of God. Did you read about the story of Ella? He said in the days, in those days, the voice of God was cast. The people had mastered how to do it without the voice of God. Once upon a time, they would not take any step until God says so. Now they have strategy. Now they have experience. Now they have wisdom. So God pulls up. Until a young generation came again and God was willing to pour his spirit upon them. It begins with encounter. First Samuel 3.21, he said, The Lord appeared again. Again. Where was God? We had departed from Shiloh. But the Lord appeared again. Shiloh was going on. But the Lord had departed from Shiloh. Until a new generation came. And he said, The Lord appeared again in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. We can gather here, but we will gather like the whole generation until God appears again. This is why you hear of new emphasis. Not to condemn the world, but God is migrating. And until we enter into the new, our souls will be puppets in the hands of the devil. The hands of the devil. Encounters are the things God brings in order to teach you the way to go. When God wants to help a generation, He begins to bring fresh encounters. Paul said in Galatians 1 15, He said, When He pleased the Father to reveal His Son to me, Jesus needed to be revealed to a man at first because the guys in Jerusalem, they had started religion. The guys in Jerusalem, they have become gods. The guys in Jerusalem were becoming indifferent. God needed another radical. He said, He revealed His Son to me. Encounters. Every generation, God wants to begin a move with. He begins with encounters. 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 That's why we speak the way we speak. Not because we have all prosperity. Not because we have all healing. But we see that the souls of men are dying. We see that principalities, the God of commerce is ruling in the church. The God of commerce determines what to do in the church. The souls of men have become mean. So God needs to bring fresh encounter. He needs to appear to us again. And when he appears, a new blueprint is granted to the church about the direction that he should go. I don't have time to expand. I don't have time. God, God, you are mighty on your soul. You can't talk at variance with what they are saying. 
because a point comes when a generation needs to move forward. This is not rebellion to the fathers, but this is following the new light because God is moving forward. This is why Paul could tell Peter, how dare you? You were here with us beholding like a Gentile. Now people came from Jerusalem. You withdraw yourself. So religion have entered the church. No, we are not a people of religion. We are a people of revival. But you can never be as bold as declaring the counsel of God unless you have seen the Lord. The Bible said concerning Moses that he was able to reject Egypt because he saw him that was invincible. He saw him that was invincible. They called the apostles. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 from verse 10, the Bible said they threatened them and told them never to preach in the name of Jesus again. And he said, Peter, full of the Holy Ghost. So this is not arrogance. It's a move of the Spirit. You don't rise up to challenge the Father. We honor them with all our lives because what we are, they made us. But every time the Holy Ghost moves, we allow Him. We say, Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, speak. He said, Judge for yourself whether to obey man or God. And He said, When they had further threatened them, because they will further threaten, they will further threaten, they will not stop. The devil will come and threaten. Your circumstances will come and threaten. The status quo will threaten. The religion will threaten. But you need something. You need an encounter. He said they returned to their own company. And when they had lifted their voices and prayed, he said the place where they were was shaken. And the Holy Ghost filled them again and granted them the spirit of boldness. The backing of God is a sign that is not rebellion. They spake as they were led, as they were moved by the Spirit. A generation must arise. We cannot afford to be lukewarm at a time like this. Oh, our children, we have no God. You think it's happening in the north. If we don't rise, you will wake up in the next 10 years and you will see Islam by your borders. Because there are no warriors. There are no kingdom functionaries. Only men of appetite are in the church. Only men of flesh. Nobody can stand up and say, restore. If you are in this generation and you have not had an encounter of what God wants to do, begin to cry. Because maybe you are not numbered. The recruitment program is not a strategy of man, it's an ordination of heaven. And the way it is extended to humankind is by encounter. If you have not perceived what God needs to do, maybe your prayer altar is dead. If you have not perceived what God wants to do, maybe your discernment is weak. You need to cry, because for you to be relevant, you must perceive. Every one of us must become like unto the sons of Isaac. That is why Moses said, I wish that all the children of God were prophets. Because a generation will come when the sun will become the torch that will pass through darkness. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. The sun will be granted. The knowing of revelation will become a normal thing. What have you designed about this generation? You think it's about prosperity. You think it's about healing. Nothing wrong with it, but that's not the emphasis of God. The source of men that are new, God comes again to purge. God comes for an army. Men that will be willing to stand and say, if I die, I die. Men that will be willing to stand. The Bible says, Paul and Barnabas, these be the men that have started their lives for the gospel. The Holy Ghost wanted to move to other territories. But the apostles locked themselves in Jerusalem. Paul and Barnabas, these be the men that have started. That doctrine was not taught in their day. That doctrine was not taught in their time. They were taught how to survive, how to hide in the cave, how to escape. But these guys have seen the move of God. Paul was going to Jerusalem. Seven men spoke by the Spirit. They said, the man, they said, go not to Jerusalem. He said, I go to Jerusalem, bound in the Spirit. After Pascal carried his bell, he said, the man that has this bell, this is what will happen to him. I go to Jerusalem, bound in the Spirit. Because there was something driving him beyond the philosophy of humankind. The move of the Spirit. What a capture have you had? When you have an encounter, then the second protocol is the protocol of separation. God isolates you from that generation. Because a generation that 
disciples you, you cannot correct it. So in Luke 1 80, he said John was in the wilderness until the day of his going forth unto Israel. Paul said, When God revealed his son to me, I confirmed not his flesh and blood, but I went to the wilderness of Arabia. He said, The gospel I teach was not taught to me by any man. The protocol of separation. That's where the wisdom for the move of God is granted to a generation. Men walking with distraction, young boys, they think it's about Facebook, they think it's about media. Media doesn't announce the man of God. In this kingdom, only God makes a man. What kinds of arrogance? Facebook platform, Facebook apostles, Facebook evangelists. Facebook does not make a man of God. Only the Spirit of God understands the dimensions of your faith. And only the Holy Ghost understands what was spoken for Sally Ruth before the foundations of the world. Jeremiah was in the spirit and he showed up. He said, Before you were born, I knew you. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb, I made you a prophet unto the nations. I made you a prophet. That royal decree was what announced Jeremiah to his generation. Jesus was a carpenter for 30 years. He didn't bother. When the time came, the Bible said he followed the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost drove him to the wilderness to the temple of the devil. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16, he said he returned in the power of the Spirit that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the wall of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. The guy appeared like a light. He didn't need publicity material. The Holy Ghost announced it. He said his fame went abroad. The reason we glamour for strategy, the reason we can advance for forth like politicians is because we don't understand the move of God and we have not paid the requirement for separation. The requirement, the sacrifice of alignment, the requirement for separation. Men on WhatsApp for four hours, on Facebook for seven hours, and they rise up, they climb the puppet, they say hallelujah. You think it's about Bible recitation. You don't understand that the message we have is given to this generation. And only men that can travel through the depths can understand the pathway of the waters that flow and make it grand the city of God. So think the will of God is about people falling down. So they go for meeting. 10 people fall down, 20 people fall down, they snap it and put on Facebook. Those same people that fell down are immorals. Champions of immorality, masturbators, the rise of the continuum. Meanwhile, that is a temporal lockdown by immorality. She fell down, got up, went back, never realizing that she was a temporal. But here was Mordecai. Without Esther falling down, he came to tell Esther, if you don't rise to the occasion, God will raise another one. And do you know whether you were raised for such a time as this? And Esther was straight back clothes and went on a three days dry fast. And the generation was saying, the move of God is an economy of purging the soul so that the man can come and align with the government of Zion. It's deeper than falling down. Men will fall in every generation. But the generation that stands is a generation that knows the move of God. People are falling down in our meetings. The ladies communicating, they look at us and say, Who is this me? Falling down, the criminal, he looks at you, they are not even impressed. How come it's only church people fall down? Go and make them fall down in the market. Until the Holy Ghost showed up, 
when he saw that this boy wanted to do business, I came back from service in 2013, and then I began get job, get trying to get a job, and the opportunities were everywhere. I had dream of being a military officer, and a door opened in the lady. And when I applied, the Holy Ghost showed up and said, "Not there, son. Not there. Not there." I struggled for one day. I said, "What is this?" He said, "Not there." The protocol of hintedness is where your soul will be shaped. You can rise up, pray in tongues, and the one you do like this people for, you think you are special until the Holy Ghost begins to chisel you. That's when he will bring you down to the lowest level. Because the Bible said the Lord kill it and he make it alive. Until he kills, he cannot bring life. He kill it, he make it alive. He will break your pride. He will break your loss by that pathway of daily. Did you not read about Moses? The guy was a prince in the courts of Pharaoh. Until God came and carried the prince out of the palace and took him to become a shepherd. A prince that was better every morning, now controlling sheep every morning. A prince that was eating wine every morning, now carrying sheep to the brook to drink water. He was there for 40 years. And when he died, when the proclivities of a prince was gone out of his soul, God showed up and said in Exodus 7 verse 1, He said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Because this time, you have what it takes to steal what my dimension. I finished my master's degree. I was the brightest young man in my, in my, in my clique. And one of my friends that I lived in the same house with, the Holy Ghost showed up. This guy has a fellowship on campus. He's not even a church in town. He was an undergraduate. I was a master's degree holder. I saw a vision to join myself to him. And I went to my brother. We were living in the same house. I said, what, what, what? I can do anything with you. Both of us were sons of Apostle Mosai. Brother, what can I do here? I feel the Lord wants me to join you. And my brother held my hand and carried me to the ocean unit. And said, here we grow from the ladder. Eh? Me that is in the same house with you. Both of us are ministers in that man. What do you mean? I wanted to talk. The Holy Ghost banished me from talking. And I was quiet for one year, eight months. The protocol of yielding. That's where the Holy Ghost shisus you. Because this thing is not about power. It's about the move of the Spirit of God. Because you can move in power, the blind will see, but the generation will go to hell. That thing that enters the souls of men is the quality of your body. In John chapter 17, verse 22, Jesus said, For their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they too might be sanctified. It's not just about revelation. What is the quality of your soul structure? Only a man that walks with the Holy Ghost can decide the generation. One more thought. Until the pride in my heart died. That was when I knew it was God that was meeting my friend. A good man, my brother, pure in heart. But God used him to chisel me. And when that thing was over, the Holy Ghost came to me and said, I will begin to announce you. And from the time the Holy Ghost spoke in 14 days, my name was in 17 nations. And I had, I had 17 invitations, four of them from the United States of America. I had invitations as far as Pakistan. People head of me in Pakistan because it is God that makes men. You can carry a megaphone, you can be on TV and nobody will hear you. But when God announces a man, then the angels come with a shofar and they blow it. Even if you cough in your room, people will repent in the US because a man has been dealt with. The reason the structure of our congregation is weak is because there are no men of youthedness. And when your obedience is complete, then the Lord comes. That's when God gives you influence. Influence is the last protocol in maximizing the move of God. That's where the blessing comes. That's where prosperity comes. So a generation without an encounter, a generation without dealing, a generation without yieldedness to the Holy Ghost, have no business with prosperity. Because that, that prosperity will make them become a slave of mammon, a god of commerce. God repeats himself to a man, carries a man through daily until the man yields completely. Then God commits resources to his hand. Then that man will know that the 10 million that was given to him as seed is not for him to enjoy, it's for him to advance the kingdom. He knows he's in trust. So God is entrusting him with kingdom resources. Prosperity is the last thing in the move of God. God of we are out of time. 
Hey, they gave me 40 minutes. I've used one hour 30 minutes already. You rise. Can you rise up and pray?
enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and personal Savior, I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.